Hi, everyone. This is Dory Clark, and I am here on behalf of Newsweek with social media expert Shama Haider. We are so happy to have you here. We are going to be talking today about an important question, which is how do you break through the noise on social media? We all know from our personal experience that everyone is spending more time on screens these days. That's certainly more of an opportunity to reach your clients, your customers, your potential customers. That's fantastic. But everyone else is doing the same thing too. And so we want to get the advice of a true expert, Shama Haider, author of the Zen of Social Media Marketing and also Momentum. So glad to have you here, Shama. It's so good to be here, Dory. It's always fun to catch up with you, even if it's on a public forum. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Last last year, we were able to hang out in Miami together. Uh, travel has been a little harder in 2020, but uh, hopefully we'll have a chance to get to do that. And we'd also like to welcome all of the people who are tuning in live here. So if Hello. you are on here, please type type it in. Say where, where you're uh, calling from. I say metaphorically. I see Philippe is here. He's already said hi. Hi, we're glad to have you. Uh, but yeah, say hi. Let us know who's here and where you're uh, where you're coming from, because we are going to be taking your questions as well, and we're really excited for them. So, Shama, the first question that that I have for you hmm. now: You are somebody that has you run a social media agency. You also have a lot of personal experience with this. I notice you have six hundred thousand uh, LinkedIn followers. You have a quarter million on Facebook, which is uh, which is pretty amazing. So, hmm. you have a lot of reach. But what are you seeing in in the last six months? What is different about using social media during COVID times as compared to before? Dory, I thought you were going to start off with something easy. Like, is that coffee or tea? You know? <laughs> <laughs> you can tell us that too. That's okay. <laughs> What's your pleasure? It's a surprise. <laughs> okay, actually, I should clarify because people they might think I'm, I'm drinking. I don't know. Yeah, you're, you're a new mom. It's probably whiskey, I'm sure, right? <laughs> Early. Uh, I mean, to be fair, I do have a one-year-old, so perhaps I'm <laughs> justified. No, you know, to answer your question with social media, Here's, I'll tell you what's changed. I'll kind of tell you where I think people should be focused, right? Given what's what's happening. Obviously, what's in, in a way it's wonderful because you have captive audience. I mean, we haven't had this since World War II era, if I may be so bold. I mean, just the we're in we really are, you know, people love it, like say unprecedented times or you know, just the new normal. But it's true. I mean, think about you know, so majority of us are grounded. We're spending way more time um, on on our computers in Zoom meetings, and that extends to social media and, and digital um, everything. But then also, you know, the other side of that coin is that you do have more digital fatigue. I mean, people have called it Zoom fatigue. You've called it, you know, <laughs> it's uh, it is it's challenging, right? And so we think what's happening is people are becoming even more choosy about their consumption. And as they go on, they will become more choosy because, you know, the first webinar is cool. The second is cool. The 80th webinar better really bring it, right? <laughs> For it's true. I, I noticed this myself. I started doing yeah. LinkedIn live sessions um, in late March. And the first one that I did had like 15,000 viewers. It was like, it was like, wow, I'm basically having like my own Super Bowl here. And it just, it was, it, I think everybody's schedule was, uh, was cleared and they're just like, well, I guess I'll do this. But yeah, you're absolutely right. The bar, the bar has, has increased in a big way. So what can people do to actually stand out and, and do something different now that everybody is kind of inured to this? Yeah, you know, you you really you really um, uh, nailed it, Dory. The bar is higher, and I think that's the thing you have to keep in mind as you approach all of this. Is you know what might have been good enough before just isn't now. Like you you have to really aim for that excellence, which is good. I think it forces all of us as business people, entrepreneurs, creatives to say, "Hey, this is my chance. I better I better you know I better raise that bar. I better get more creative." I will tell you, here's what's fascinating. You know, we had when things started we had obviously clients were deeply affected trade shows canceled usual way of doing business or perhaps the way they were expecting to get visibility or leads or whatever that is you know went kaput just wasn't gonna happen and so one of the things that what i found interesting is as we've helped them even shift to remote so as we say like hey remote's getting inundated i just want to be clear that's not to say you don't want to do it or avoid because 
No, I mean, the, <laughs> the audience is still there. Yes, the bar is higher, but it's never been a better time. Um, and I'll tell you, you know, with our clients, just in that we were just doing the numbers, just in 20, you know, 2020, they've seen an average of 71% increase in leads compared to uh, the, the year prior with trade shows canceled and everything. So I do want to I do want to put that out there saying, you know, the things that you're we're doing, the digital, it's working. I mean, the pipelines are getting filled. People are getting visibility. So still great opportunities to be had. Now we look at, okay, but how then, how do you take advantage of it? And I'll give you my three C's. All right. Cause I'm a big, <laughs> I like, Oh my God. We want the three C's. Give it to us. Yeah, I'll give you the three C's one compact, right? Um, micro micro is, is winning right now more than before. And I know, Look, we say, oh, but people will binge Game of Thrones, yada, yada, yada. Yes, this is true. But unless you are creating Game of Thrones, compact is your friend, okay? Like, this, is, this is important. The other part of it is consistency. So compact is great. We want to be consistent with that compactness. So I know, you know, some, like there's a great marketing expert out there. His name is Robert Middleton. I followed his work for years. I mean, Robert is one of the originals in the field. He teaches, he works a lot with solopreneurs, but I think his content is great. He was one of the first newsletters on the internet in marketing. I mean, you're talking, you know, back in the day. And recently, for example, he made a switch and he said, you know, rather than one longer newsletter a week, I'm going to start sending something every day. And that might seem like, whoa, but it works for his audience and it's, it's consistent, it's compact, right? So it's a very, it's a much quicker message every day to sort of take in versus, something longer even when we're doing um you know i've done so many like you dory all my keynotes and everything has gone digital so doing tons of remote events i'm also finding shortening that a little bit like 30 45 minutes versus you might have 60 minutes on stage right but even just chopping off that little bit makes a difference so compact consistency and the third one i know you will love dory is creativity you've got to get creative this is where this is where it counts and you know, the, the thing about creativity is it's messy. It's not always straightforward and it's scary, right? Like you, there's times I put something out there that I'm like, whoa, best work ever, Hyder. Great job. And crickets. Well, you know, more or less, right? I'm just like, wow, I thought that was so good. <laughs> and you're like, okay, all right, next, next thing. Well, and, and then you start doing something else. And uh, what you find is people love it. And you're like, wait, I, I didn't even put like that was <laughs> so I think that's always funny as creativity um, is is different. And that means testing things out, being open to experimentation, not being stuck. You know, I mean, we've had I did um, for Sharp Spring actually just yesterday. They have this acceleration series right now for agency owners and they have these great lineup of speakers. And that's really fascinating because they're working with influencers in the space. They're engaging. I don't know if they would have done this before pre-COVID, but it's working really well. So I think part of this is you've got to learn to experiment. If you're B2B and you might have never considered influencer marketing, well, now's your chance, right? Um, if you're B2C and you've never considered doing PR or really getting your name out there, now's your chance. So I think that creativity is really key. Yeah, Shama, that's that's really valuable. Thank you. And I've certainly seen that in in my own business, uh, just testing things over time. I mean, it's actually sort of sort of stunning that one of the things that is the best performing for me on LinkedIn, um, which you know you can you can spend hours and hours crafting this perfect uh, missive or this article, and actually something that that seems to always blow up is if I take a friend's book and I hold it up and I'm like, congratulations, Shama on her new book. And like, oh my gosh, 10,000, 20,000 people are like, yay, they're flipping out. And meanwhile, I've spent like five hours writing an article that gets 2000 views. So really seeing what people like is uh, is very interesting as a way of testing it out. And I just want to take the opportunity to, uh, to greet some of our friends who are here, who are joining us live. Uh, we'd like to say hi to Ty from Washington State. We have Jasuga from India. We have Abba from Dubai. Oh my goodness, this is an international crowd. I love it. Veronica from New Jersey. Uh, we have Kieran from London, Amber from Pittsburgh, Sasha from Vancouver, Carmen from Santiago de Chile, Katarina from Brazil. Uh, we have Michael from Berkeley Heights, New Jersey. We have Joel from Ottawa, Lisa from Vancouver. Oh my gosh, Deborah from Ortley Beach, New Jersey. We have a very strong New Jersey showing. All right, Pro you know, in the house gardens, <laughs> very nice. This is yeah, good. 
feel like I feel like Dory's living out her NPR Guy Raz dreams right now. <laughs> Absolutely. Why not? Why not? Well, thank you so much, everybody. We're so glad to have you here. This is great. Janet from Syracuse. Uh, we've got uh, we've got all kinds of, of folks here. Joshua from San Antonio. So thank you. And I will say we are going to be taking questions for Shama from, from you, from the audience very soon. So please feel free to start typing your questions. And we'd like to hear what is on your mind. Uh, and I'll just I'll just mention this is a great opportunity if you would like to open a new window and go to follow Newsweek, Shama, and myself on LinkedIn. That is a that is a fantastic thing that you can do. And if you want to subscribe to my LinkedIn newsletter, just go to doryclark.com slash LinkedIn and hit the subscribe button. You can do it there. So Shama, a question that I have for you, which I hear a lot from people, is they say, you know what? there's, there's all these social channels. I don't know where to focus. I don't really know where to get started. Should I be, should I be on TikTok? I think everybody I know is freaking out. Like, should I be on TikTok? Do I have to be on TikTok? Or, you know, how do you know where, where to emphasize your efforts and where you can just say, you know what, that's not for me. I'm going to let it lie. Okay. <laughs> Do you want me to give you another uh, another little acronym there, Dory? <laughs> oh my goodness! If you have acronyms in your back pocket, yeah. then uh, by all means. Apparently, apparently, it's what I do now. Uh, so, <laughs> so I'll give you the A B C of of that um, to answer that question. The A is your audience, right? Where is your audience? So TikTok is a great platform, but it still skews younger. If you're a B two B company. It's not your first platform. It can be. I think it's fantastic if you want to, you know, have experiment there. But you want to go where your audience is, right? If you're, for example, design, Instagram, Pinterest come to mind, things that are visual. Are um, you on TikTok? So I, I am. I'm Shema on TikTok. I don't have I don't do a ton on TikTok. I will tell you this because the other one is B. It's your bandwidth. And this is really important because, you know, it's very easy for me to sit here and say, or, or for Dory, you and I could be like, be on everything. I know a lot of gurus do that. It's such terrible advice because, you know, it all depends on your bandwidth. Do you have a team of 20 you can deploy? Hey, more the like, right? Get every billboard in <laughs> Times Square. Go for it. But I, I think what's much more likely and much more realistic is that you look at where, you know, where your audience is, what your bandwidth is like. And so for me, I focus a lot on LinkedIn because my audience is there. I work with, you know, our audience is a lot of tech companies. We work with a lot of middle market companies, enterprise folks. Th these folks tend, tend to be on LinkedIn more. So my audience is on LinkedIn. The folks, you know, people who book me for keynotes are on LinkedIn. Now I'm on Instagram and I have fun. My content's a little bit different there. But you have to look at what's your bandwidth like. How much can you do? Because the C... I'll go back to one of my favorite words. No, it's not very sexy, but it's such a great term. And it's consistency, right? So you get on the platform where you can be consistent. You uh, TikTok's great. It's awesome. And it, you can, it can work for you, but you have to be creating multiple TikToks a day. And so is that within your bandwidth? Is that within your, your wheelhouse? And is that where your audience is? Is that where you're going to get the most bang for your buck? What I find is a lot of my audience that may be on TikTok is already on other platforms where I'm connecting with them. So, you know, if I decide ever to expand and do more on TikTok, it'll be because I have more bandwidth or I've got, you know, a, a strategy where I feel I can be really consistent with it. Um, I also think it's really important as we talk about social media, not to ignore the pillars, right? And Dory, you're so great with this content creation. Like what, do you, what are you sharing? Not just, hey, you have a platform, but the medium is not the message. So it's very important to think about what's what's your who's your audience? What value do you want to be creating? What do you want to be known for? And how do you connect the dots? How do you educate them, entertain them? And so while I think it's very easy for someone to be like, wait, do I just have to dance on TikTok? If that's not your thing, right? You could, but then don't expect, you know, clients from it or whatever it is that you're thinking. So I think it's just important to to also d differentiate between sort of fame and popularity and and what you're actually doing that moves the needle for you and your your professional goals. I know we're you're going to open it up for questions soon, Dory, or we already have. And I was going to say, feel free, guys, to ask me anything you like. It doesn't have to be limited to social media, but if you have marketing or PR or business questions in general, you know, how we're doing things. I run Zen Media, so I have employees, we work with clients, we deal with um, 
a, <laughs> a rainbow of issues every single day. So I'm happy to answer any question you guys want to throw my way. Fantastic. Well, actually, if the first one that came through here is Joshua wants to know, and it is maybe LinkedIn, but we want to check here. Yeah. Joshua wants to know, Shama, what social media platform do you focus the most content on? And whichever one it is, if it is if it is LinkedIn or otherwise, um, I'm curious, can you give us kind of a breakdown? Like what types of things do you share? You know, what, uh, you know, do you, do you create like an editorial calendar and plan it out in advance and what performs the best for you? Yeah. Great question. Thanks for asking, uh, Joshua. So here's, and it's interesting because Joshua asked the question about what's, where do you create the most content? And if you look at the most content, it's probably Twitter, right? Because there's so many tweets <laughs> happening. It's a different beast. Now, where I, where I, which I'm, what I'm very gung ho about is LinkedIn. So in general, where do I spend more of my time? LinkedIn. I think it's the platform is is wonderful. It's growing. But here's how I approach social media. And it's a great question, Dory, as, as an extension of, of what you joined with Joshua's question. I start with a macro. Okay. So I don't look at Twitter and say, what am I going to tweet? Facebook, what am I going to tweet? I, and again. You know, I'm lucky. I have a team of people I work with. They're very smart. They're very creative. I have designers and content writers. But the big strategy, so we might start with something like, you know, um, I'll give you just a, a broad topic. For example, when trade shows were canceled, we did a macro topic of what to do now that your trade show has been canceled. And I created what I call like pillar content around that. So I had a video that I did on what to do if trade shows are canceled. And I did an article right on on your steps you should take if you were relying on a show and it's gone and then once you have sort of those pillar pieces of content it's very easy and this is where you can also leverage a team by the way for my team to take that and say well here's 12 tweets out of it okay well here's an instagram post out of it here's you know where you take that video put it on linkedin take that video put it on um YouTube. And so I'm also excited about YouTube. I'm doing more there slowly, but steadily. And so I do, again, I think it's important not to just grow your numbers for the sake of growing your numbers, but that you have a really, you know, quality audience that resonates and, um, and likes what you have to share. I mean, I think that's, that's such a key part. So I will also say this, I highly discourage buying followers, or get it. It's, I know there's, I know the temptation is there because it's like, wow, I can have those numbers. But in the long run, I've never known anyone to go that route and be successful at what they were trying to do, which is actually like grow a business. Yeah, that's, that's so true, Shama. Absolutely. Um, if, if you're not growing it organically, then it, it doesn't, it doesn't have any real benefit in terms of, of your long-term business growth. And I, I, think you probably have some interesting insights about this because you were alluding to this before about creating a whole raft of content around what to do now that your co conference is canceled. But Ty had a question and he wants to know how can startups who have traditionally used face-to-face -face conferences pivot to a more digital presence? What, what are your thoughts about that in terms of startup marketing? Yeah, great question, Ty. Uh, and before I answer that, Dory, I just want to say when I say organic, I'm not discounting paid, by the way, like Instagram giveaways, when you have paid opportunities to grow your following or, you know, partnership, like those are wonderful. You just, not, you don't want to do it where it's random folks or bots like that. That's the no, no box. All right. So I just want to, I just want to clarify that, that there's nothing wrong with, with paying and getting in front of your right audience. Like there's great opportunities there that you can explore. Now to Ty's question, here's the first part. First step I start with, with any client that says we were doing face to face, we've, you know, when you stop and you say, okay, why were you doing that? You sort of have to peel back the layers of the onion to figure out what's at the core of it. And so, for example, one company that I spoke to, you know, they said, we've been doing, we've been going to this trade show. It's where we get all our leads for the year. It's how we figure out where, where our business lands. And great. And he said, well, why do you go there? What's the goal? And they're like, I don't know. We've gone there for the last 20 years, right? Like it was just because that's how they, they've always done it. So I think it's a great opportunity to step back and say, okay, again, audience, who are we trying to reach? What are we trying to accomplish? And then figuring out, it's almost like the last part is the digital to say, okay, so if we want to do this, what's the best way? So one, like, for example, you know, let's say you used to take clients out for, for lunches or dinners. What we're finding is, and I do this with my team, you know, when we have these like our little remote happy hours, 
Um, we let everybody order from like Uber Eats or Postmates or DoorDash or whatever, and then just you know build a company. But it's nice to be able to have that. So there's ways where you can still have elements of that physical, right? Like, hey, free meal, that's kind of fun, <laughs> and hang out. And But I, again, I think you have to get very clear on what your audience is, what your goals are, and maybe your salespeople can't do that face-to-face -face initially like they used to do. Maybe this is where you need to leverage an influencer to create broader awareness, and then you guys step in. So you really have to kind of reevaluate the whole funnel based on your goals rather than saying, well, this is what we did physically, here was our conference, now we're going to take this and try to slap this on to, you know, something digital. Yeah, I think that's that's really true, Shama. Thank you very much. I just want to highlight Lucy Brunson's con, uh, comment. This is the future of America. I have no idea what you mean, Lucy, but I love it. And I will say, yes, yes, Shama is the future of America. Uh, our, LinkedIn, our weekly Thursday LinkedIn Lives, definitely the future of America. Uh, and thanks to our beautiful international audience, you know, our friends in India and Brazil and all over the world joining us, our Canadian friends. Uh, maybe it's the future of the world too. So I'll just encourage all of you to tune in every single Thursday, 12 p.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time for our LinkedIn Live series, Better, uh, will join us every single week. So thank you for that. And I'll just remind you guys too, it, at whatever channel you're watching this on, please hit like, please hit share so that your friends and colleagues can benefit from this conversation as well. So a great question that came in through LinkedIn, and Shama, I'm curious about your advice about this. What tools do you use to track the effectiveness of social media? Uh, famously, John Wanamaker uh, said that, uh, that Half the money he spent on advertising was really effective and half didn't work at all. But the problem was he couldn't tell which half was which. How do we solve that problem on social? Yeah, so it's a great question, Dory. And it's one that comes up often. Here's where I think what you what you have to remember when you're trying to measure marketing in general, right? There is there's two ways to measure it. And I know the academic in you, Dory, will will like this. Um, there's the quantitative, and this is the numbers, right? Like, and as authors, we know how many copies of the book did you sell? How many visitors did you get? How many leads? Like, this is all the very quantifiable stuff that you can touch, feel, see, put in reports for the higher ups. Then there's the qualitative, which I think is so often overlooked or not measured, but it really is incredibly powerful because this is what people are saying about you. This is your reputation. This is what you this, this is what you know attracts opportunities, like especially in the B2B world. You know, there was a Gartner did a study where they said 64% of people have already made up their mind who they want to work with before they ever get in touch with a salesperson, before they ever get in touch with a company. You can't see that, you know what I mean? You can't see that pre-64%. So you're seeing it when it converts. But it's so it's it's things like when someone says, boy, you are everywhere right now, or your company is really doing great. I see you guys everywhere, I hear about you. It's that kind of buzz that is, I will say, it is harder to measure, not that it's impossible. It's harder to measure. Um, and I do believe in measuring bottom line results because there is... You know, it's very, it, it's hard to say, well, we have so many Twitter followers. And so we got so many website visitors. What you're really looking for is that sort of correlation in revenue, in share of voice. And there's so many tools, you know, there's um, coverage book is one that you can use for media relations. Um, you know, there's, there's Sprout Social just for social metrics. In fact, I think some of the best social metrics are uh, internal. So, you know, Twitter gives you great metrics, Instagram, Facebook, they all provide you great analytics and data. But at the end of the day, you have to realize that it's just data. It's kind of how, what you do with it, what it looks like. And again, it is a long game. I think that's the important part, you know. Um, and Dora, you and I are great examples of this. You know, how long have we been putting out great content? How long, you know, have we been doing thinking about this and doing it? And I think the the fallacy right now are often when you look at sort of the TikTok world is, oh wow, people this they blew up yesterday or they, you know. <laughs> and really what what's much more true is that it's much more slower than that. It's, you know, it really needs time to build. And so you you have to look at it as a long game if you're in it for what can I do? That's not to say you can't have a viral campaign. I mean, we do this kind of stuff every day. But if you're really looking to build something long term, business, brand, 
your career, whatever it is, you have to realize that it's not that one thing. It's that thing that you do every single day that matters. I think that's so important, Shama. Thank you for for raising that. And it's true. Our society tends to glorify the instant uh, breakthrough hit. But of course, that's so vanishingly rare, which is why it gets highlighted in the first place. News is not news if it happens every day. That's just life. That's just boring. No one would write about it if all the time people had these, you know, million follower overnight sensations. And so I remember actually the very first time we ever met in person. I'm not sure if you, uh, if you remember back, it was South by Southwest. I believe it was 2011. And you interviewed me at South by Southwest for your Shama TV. And, uh, and we had a, we had a chat there. So you, you have been pounding the pavement on this um, for, for well over a decade. For sure. And I think that's the thing, you know, for me, it's also always been important to walk the talk. I feel like I can't realistically ask clients to do anything, you know, and I mentioned this on a live uh, webcast that I was on yesterday. He said, listen, the cobbler's children can't not have shoes anymore. It doesn't work in today's world. Right. It worked in a previous world. But I think today you really have to practice what you preach. You can't I can't be telling clients, hey, you need to invest in media and do videos and do these things if we're not embracing that, if we're not doing that. And so, yeah, you're right, Dory. It's been more than a decade. And, you know, it's funny because people pop up or brands pop up and they're like, oh, we just discovered you. And I'm like, wonderful. <laughs> so that's how it works. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And thanks to Jennifer for noticing uh, our special guest star here that we have. Uh, I'll just uh, flag here. If there are any talent agents, uh, CAA, William Morris, Philip the Cat is looking for representation. He is making himself known and available right now. So thank you for that call out. We definitely appreciate that. So we have time for just one or two more questions, Shama. I thought this was a, a great one that, uh, that came through from a LinkedIn user, they wanted to know with everyone working remotely, uh, everything's digital, people are having social media fatigue. How do we make sure that our posts are relevant and attractive to our audiences? I, I think so many people just feel like blah, blah, same old, same old. How do you actually keep things fresh? What, I think this might be in some ways a question about voice. You know, how, how do you make it so that your stuff doesn't sound like everybody else is on social media? You know, I think what Newsweek is doing <laughs> is a great, is a great uh, a sort of a meta concept. What we're doing right now, Dory, right? So look at Newsweek working with you and saying, hey, um, can you tap folks that are different voices? Look, you can't change an inherent brand voice. What you can do is amplify that voice and be creative and, and, and curate, right? So this is what I'm saying. I've seen such a rise in B2B influencers or, it, you know, and I influencers broadly, thought leaders, whatnot. And ha I, I see that more in demand because I think brands are realizing, listen, people are tuning us out. We can't say the same thing all the time in the same manner. And one really easy way to switch it up is to bring new blood in, right? Bring new voices in, bring new and shake it up in that way. So I think that's where you, again, you have to get creative. I'll remind people of the three C's if they join later, uh, you know, keep it, keep it compact, keep it consistent and be creative. And that does mean you have to experiment and try some things. Uh, you know, not everything is going to be knocked out of the park. And so we think that's how you, you counteract that fatigue is you keep, you keep people guessing or looking. They're like, wow, that's different. What well, that's that's unique. It's and again, not everything is gonna be a wonderful hit. And that does require, we'll see this, our best clients, our best case studies during this entire COVID period have come from across industries. I mean, believe it or not, the, including the restaurant industries, rest, industries that have been extremely hard hit by everything that's happening, and it all boils down to the leadership. When the leadership is willing to say, let's try this new thing, let's you know, Newsweek's like, let's put Dory on and have her bring, you know, some guests that we think our audience will enjoy and can learn from. That's what happens. So I think you have to have leadership that's open and willing and, and willing to experiment and try new things. And that's very hard. I will say this. If you're at a company where that's not happening, unless you are the leadership and you feel like you can enact change, right? This is where I also think people, you know, are going to lose employees and others will do a great job retaining them. Is, you know, are you able to let your team experiment and try things and and be creative? You know, it's the clients that say, 
hey, let's do it. Let's we're game. Um, you know, Dory, you spoke on, at the at the Forbes Eight Summit. You know, and uh, and we did that with a client, and it was wonderful. It was great to get these people on board and and serve their audience. But it happened because the leadership said, "We're game. Let's do it. What what do we need to do?" So I think that attitude is so important. Yeah, thank you so much, Shama. That's such an important reminder. And as an additional reminder to all of you guys, we are doing these sessions, the better interview series for Newsweek, every single Thursday, 12 Eastern, 9 Pacific. Tune in. We're so grateful today to have been joined by our friend Shama Hyder. And if you'd like to uh, to stay in touch and be kept abreast of these amazing sessions, please feel free to check out my website and subscribe to my newsletter at doryclark.com. And be sure on LinkedIn, I mean, you're you're already you're already on these social channels right now so please feel free and go ahead to follow shama follow newsweek follow me and you will hear about uh, all of all of these great things thanks to all of our friends for tuning in live and shama hider thank you so much for uh, for joining us and for sharing your expertise thanks for having me dory this was a blast thanks newsweek take care everyone